So I have two uh, short presentations. In the first one, I will really give just a very short high-level overview how uh, Core is using resourcing. And in the second one, um, I would like to talk a little bit about a project which, uh, uh, in which I'm involved with Martin in collaboration, where we're kind of testing and trying to evaluate OAIP image against resourcing. So um, yeah, uh, let me start. So um, let me just give you a very, very short introduction of what Core is about. Core is a um, tool which, um, uh, which basically tries to aggregate all open access articles across all sorts of data sources worldwide. We want to enrich this content and provide seamless access to it through a set of data services. And because we have a lot of content, um, we have a lot of content, we are facing lots of challenges in kind of synchronizing this content. It is the world's largest data set of full text open access publications with accompanying metadata. And this is one of the key reasons why we actually looked uh, to resourcing uh, for, uh, for the problems we're, we're trying to solve. So um, in terms of uh, the data we've got, we've got about 131 million metadata records, uh, 93 million abstracts, more than 11 million of full text. So it really gives uh, you um, an, an idea of, um, of uh, uh, why um, OAI PMH might not be particularly scalable for our purposes. We also, uh, I mean, we are not just aggregating and getting this data just for the sake of it. We're really doing it to provide all sorts of services, not just enable us to do the services, but also to uh, enable other people, third parties, to basically reuse our data and build services on the way. But uh, just to kind of give you a very brief introduction of what kind of services we've got, we've got a core portal, which is perhaps the most famous or most well-known service, even though I would say the least interesting from this perspective. Uh, it enables people to search, basically, and, 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 and uh, find articles and, and uh, download articles. So it's got more than um, 25 million uh, downloads per annum, basically. And then, but the more interesting services are related to the core API or core data dumps where people can actually download uh, data, or large data sets from us and do something interesting with them. Uh, there are two services which actually make use of resourcing and these are the services I would like to tell you about a little bit. So the one, first one is called Core FastSync and the other one is called Publisher Connector which was developed in a project called OpenMinded. Uh, then we also have a recommender for repositories, repository dashboard, analytical dashboard. So it just gives you uh, an overview of what can, what can you kind of do with lots of scholar data. So let me now talk a little bit about the service uh, which we have developed with uh, uh, the Open Minded project, which actually had a, had a final review yesterday and, then, and the final review went very well. So I'm quite happy uh, today. So, um, this, uh, so what uh, Open Minded is trying to do is basically uh, to enable the text and data mining of very large amounts of scientific publications. And in order to do that, it obviously needs to have access to them. So um, you have probably heard of uh, systems or tools such as Core and OpenAir. Um, and uh, so uh, Core, both Core and OpenAir use OAI PMH to harvest data from um, repositories. And when I say data, I mean both metadata and the content. And they use, uh, they use a protocol which uh, which basically um, is there, which has been there always, which repositories have supported for a very long time, and, and it is not, uh, you know, the solutions, the solutions are there, basically. There are some challenges, but basically uh, this is what we use. But also what we wanted to really do here is we wanted to reach out not only to the open access repositories and open access journals, we also were really interested in getting access to the content of provided by big, big publishers, such as Elsevier, Springer, and so forth, because they started to be important publishers of open access content. So um, we realized that these publishers do not, or at that time, they do, uh, even actually today, they do not support OAI PMH. In fact, they support usually some, they have usually some APIs, uh, but each of those APIs are different. So we decided to create something which we call a publisher connector. This is basically a tool which uh, translates or which tries to gather content uh, from the individual publishers. So we have basically different implementations or publisher specific implementations and then exposes these data so that they can be ingested by core and open air. And obviously one of the first questions we, we try to solve here is, okay, if we, if we gather the content from these publishers, how shall we expose it to core and open air so they can ingest it? 
And obviously, we you could say we should have used OAIPMH because OAIPMH already uh, supports, uh, so because both Core and OpenAir can ingest using OAIPMH. But we thought slightly differently, um, uh, you know, and people, people kind of would say, oh, um, use just OAIPMH because harvesting with OAIPMH is easy. But I would argue that full text harvesting with OAIPMH is really, really not easy. It's actually really, really difficult for all sorts of problems. So uh, these are just some of those problems. Uh, locating the full text URLs in the metadata items is a problem. Uh, interoperability of the metadata records uh, which come from repositories is a problem. Sequential nature of, of OAIPMH is a problem because some repositories are too big uh, for uh, harvesting and harvesting takes very long time. Um, scalability in general is a problem, reliability is a problem, incremental updates, which means basically that you want to come the next day and ask only for the increments rather than having to do all the work again is a problem with OAIPMH. And various kinds of other things uh, which are listed on the slides, and this is just not an exclusive, there are more of them. So what we decided to do was actually we turned to resourcing and we said, okay, resourcing actually does provide the capability for us to, uh, to synchronize at the level of those files, both at, the, um, both at the level of the metadata and the content. So let's try to use it. And we faced some challenges which were related to scalability and more, but kind of scalability from the perspective of not having an implementation that would be sufficiently scalable. There was no issue in terms of, um, in terms of uh, the architecture of resourcing. Uh, so the architecture was ideal for us, in fact. So um, by doing so, we would, what, so we had basically this project where we, uh, which Martin already mentioned, where we kind of developed some code and we deployed it, and this enabled us to actually increase the amount of content which we have in core by about two million papers. And this is the, the, these data which you see. So this is what we are getting from this core publisher connector from these individual publishers. These data are as of January 2018. So actually, in fact, I already we already have more than two million of these articles. So this is just for illustration that it, it had a significant impact uh, for us in being able to uh, gather more open access content. Um, and what we also do with this content and that might be interesting to you is we are actually making this content available to this new platform called uh, OpenMinded, which is a service, a uh, large scale service, cloud-based service for text and data mining, um, large amounts of open science or, or basically any, not even non-open access publications, but we are giving access to, we're providing access to open access publications in this case. And, and, and through Core and Open Air, I believe that the Open Mind platform has now access to something like 14 million uh, scientific publications, which I think is very interesting. Okay, um, I want to also mention another tool which Core is using, which is called, or which Core provides. It's a service, actually, of Core. And this is called Core Fasting, which provides fast synchronization of core data to anyone who is interested in, in doing something interesting with them. So um, I described uh, previously this Core Publisher Connector, uh, but we already realized Core Publisher Connector is used for ingestion by Core. So Core ingests from the Core Publisher Connector using resourcing. But we were also interested, or because people came to us and said like, okay, how about we get you all your content and we would like to stay synchronized with everything that is in core. And these, were, these are typically, though, the people who come to us are typically commercial, uh, commercial players. Uh, one of them is Neighbor Academic. We have also a contract with OntoChem Solutions and we have some others who I cannot name. So, um, uh, so but it, there, there seems to be a, a lot of interest in this. Uh, so we developed this core fasting because there was a demand for it, basically. Um, so this is what the uh, Neighbor Academic uh, is doing. They basically, they are using this core fasting. They're ingesting uh, data from core using resourcing. Uh, and they are, build, they are building basically a very large uh, search engine for academic literature. I'm not sure if you've heard about Neighbor, but Neighbor is the top one search uh, provider in South Korea. So um, they, are, they are bigger than Google in, in that area. Uh, probably some sort of language barriers might be one of the reasons, but uh, they are, it's, a very, very big, uh, it's a very, very big company and Core is their biggest data supplier via Core Fasting. And this is what they really say. Uh, they say that by integrating with Core, we have significantly increased the number of research papers, neighbor academic indexes, 
In fact, Core is Neighbor's largest provider of full text content. Course data are now synchronized with Neighbor using Core Fast Sync, reducing the amount of effort that would be needed to collect these data in traditional ways. And this in traditional ways, what they mean is that they would need to go to the individual repositories, to the individual publishers, and that's a lot of work, and they want to save themselves this work, and that's why they work with us. Okay, now you might ask one really uh, kind of interesting uh, question, which is basically, uh, okay, we have resourcing, uh, Core can already ingest using resourcing from publishers, Core can expose resourcing to anyone else. Why do we keep harvesting content from repositories using OAI PMH when there's resourcing, which is kind of better? And uh, I would uh, like to now make the case for why resourcing is better in the second presentation, okay? So we want, in the end, to change this. Uh, we want repositories to adapt and migrate to the more, um, to the more um, kind of uh, recent solutions. Uh, so overall, uh, really, in terms of this presentation, resourcing is a pragmatic solution for core to exchange and synchronize large scholarly data set. It is something we, to which we came because we have this necessity to solve this problem. Um, so let me just transfer to this one. Um, and it's also a short one. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see it well. So now I want to talk a little bit about the project which is funded by the European Open Science Cloud Pilot. Uh, it's, it will be running still until December 2018 when we want to include um, conclude a couple of experiments uh, about OIPMH and resourcing. So um, uh, the, uh, we are uh, participating in this project because uh, the project develops a number of demonstrators which function as kind of high profile pilots and they integrate all sorts of services and we're just one of them. Um, one of the uh, key um, uh, one, one of the key uh, motivations basically for um, uh, for our work here is that uh, we realize that scientific repositories are um, of limited value um, and that actually the key value of a, of a, of a repository institutional repository or a journal lies actually in the data being able to be aggregated and reused by others if basically a repository doesn't provide the functionality of exposing uh, its data to others, then I would, um, I, I feel that um, uh, then the repository is in my opinion not really uh, fulfilling its, um, uh, its purpose. So um, uh, as, uh, as it was pro probably already mentioned, OAI PMH has some problems in terms of scalability. It suffers from various kind of inconsistent um, implementations across repository platforms and it deals only with the transfer of metadata. Uh, that is really the key, the metadata rather than the resources themselves. And I will be showing you, I will show you um, some, um, some uh, kind of results of a study which uh, demonstrates how big of a problem this is. Um, access to scientific resources can be effectively, regularly and reliably exchanged uh, uh, using resourcing as we have heard. And, um, and what we are really trying to do here is to conduct a set of experiments, basically benchmarks, which compare OIPMH with resources. And how, so how do you run these benchmarks? You run them by uh, deciding on uh, various kinds of dimensions along uh, which you want to run those experiments. So uh, for us, uh, the dimensions are, for example, the type of the synchronization we're interested in. This could be, you just want to synchronize everything that's that's what we call batch. Uh, you want to be incremental, or you want to harvest only something from the repository. But you ha can have other uh, uh, you can have other dimensions which are interested in here, such as the resource type. You are interested only in harvesting metadata, or you are interested in harvesting both metadata and the resources themselves. Then you can get obviously quite different results. Uh, implementation is different. You know, maybe OAI PMH has to run in has to run sequential. But resourcing enables parallelized, uh, parallelized uh, uh, synchronization, which is uh, perhaps a big advantage of it in terms of uh, scalability. Uh, you can also make use of different resourcing methods. This is something which Martin mentioned. Uh, he, meant, he talked about um, he talked about resource lists, which is something which we call in our case resourcing single at the moment. Uh, we he also talked about resource dumb. But uh, we have also developed something which is a little bit in between, which is called, which we call resourcing batch. I will talk about it a little bit more. Um, and we also can compare about based on performance uh, and being interested in speed, complexity, reliability, 
freshness and so on. And, 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 and this is what we're doing. And I will only be showing you some initial results on this. So, um, um, yes. So here, what we are doing as part of this project is really we're running experiments, we're evaluating them, and we will be disseminating the results um, hopefully by the uh, end of the year. Uh, Martin has talked a little a lot about this slide, but what I want to kind of highlight here is, is just one thing, which is basically that um, resourcing is again based on sitemaps, and in the sitemaps you have you can say one very very important thing. You can provide an explicit link using this describe by relation type, uh, which uh, basically links the uh, this PDF which you see uh, described. Uh, with the metadata which are in the XML file, which are basically linked through the, using this described by relationship. And this is very, very important. This is something which is in fact missing in a way IPMH. And it is a, that is a kind of a killer feature of resourcing uh, against OAI PMH when, when it comes to uh, synchronizing scholarly publications. Uh, you will hear about this a little bit more. So it's this explicit link between the metadata and the described resource. And you might think this is this is something which is obvious, but obviously it wasn't obvious to the people who created uh, who created uh, uh, who created OAI PMH because in Dublin Core, uh, and that I don't mean people from Osmos, but I mean actually people who uh, who described who basically put the DC um, uh, who described the uh, provided the specification for the Dublin Core fields basically because there's no uh, there's no suggestion that actually there should be a link between the resource itself and that's that's what creates the really really big problems in aggregating content. Okay, and and perhaps that's uh, also because OAP image was designed really for metadata and not for the for the synchronization of the resources themselves. So um, let's not blame it just on on, on the specification. So um, yeah, uh, so this is this is where we are. So it's also designed to, to allow synchronization of resources, and it's it's web centric. So let me go on the next slide. This now I'm on three slides, which kind of show the initial results of the uh, of the performance. The first one it just looks in OAI PMH. We basically took lots of different uh, file, lots of different repository systems, and you can see basically that in the column number of repositories. So we have 659 of them were DSpace, 400 of them were ePrints. They come basically from Core, and we wanted to measure how fast, uh, how fast or how quickly we can actually aggregate their metadata. This all this only concerns metadata. So we took kind of how many records per second we can get on average, or what's the median repository. And you can obviously see that the median repository is significantly uh, slower um, than, uh, than what the average is. That, that's quite common, we can, we can see across the board. So what you get, let's say for DSpace, which is running fairly fast, uh, you can see that we can get about 70 records uh, per second. That's fine for um, uh, that's fine for uh, some repositories or for many repositories, but it might not be fine for the very very big repositories. So 70 records per second. If you have millions and millions of records, if you had something like Core with 131 million records, if you make your if you make your make your divisions, you will see that that takes a very very long time. Uh, and that's not really acceptable for us. So we wanted to get something better. Uh, but sorry, just coming back to it, you can also see that there is a significant difference between the platforms. So while DSpace gives you, let's say, 70 uh, records per second, uh, for DLibra, you get less than one. And that's, that's, I think, really, really problematic. Then I think, you know, this repository is really not providing the functionality it should, because that's a key functionality. Um, there are also some, I would not blame it, everything uh, here on just the repository system. There are also some other considerations to be uh, to be said here because it is the case that um, DSpace uh, is generally more widely used in the US, which has better kind of connectivity. Uh, and ePrints tends to be used a little bit more um, in, the, in, in, in other areas of the world where you have perhaps a little bit less connectivity. So certain differences could be also down to the kind of connectivity issue. Um, this is another uh, kind of slide, which is perhaps a little bit more interesting now, because now we're comparing OAI PMH with resources, and we're comparing with, in fact, um, different types of resources. So um, we have, again, the, the, we have selected basically in the first half of the table, we've selected 
uh, uh, the repository platforms, and we took the first, um, we took the repository, which is the median fast repository in its group, basically. But the one which has at least 1,000 records, okay? So if there was like one uh, which was exactly the median, but had, had less than 1,000 records, we didn't consider it a sufficiently good sample. So we took the closest one. And uh, then we basically run this experiment where we, uh, where we measure uh, how fast we could get, we could transfer exactly the same data using uh, something which we call resourcing batch. And the batch means that basically we use, we provide on demand, we create a resourcing dump, uh, which dumps basically 100 and then we repeat it. Uh, so what you can see is that if we are batching the, the resourcing uh, stuff, uh, the, we can basically get faster speeds. So from 141 for uh, records per second uh, with batch 100, we could get to something like 700 uh, for batch uh, when we were batching 2,000 records. So it's 700 records per second. That is 10 times faster than OAI PMH. That is very significant. Now, also one of the things which I want to mention here is that uh, this um, the situation of metadata harvesting, so harvesting very small metadata file is in fact a very extreme case for resourcing. It is in fact the case where, where it is very hard for resourcing to provide very good performance. Resourcing is particularly good when you have larger files because the overhead of the HTTP connection is, uh, is, is negligible then. But if you have very, very small files, the overhead becomes much more, uh, much more significant. And therefore, in situations where you have lots of small metadata files and you're not interested in aggregating the content, um, if you were to use resource lists and you would make for every single, uh, for every single uh, resource uh, an HTTP request, you could potentially end up with a performance lower than OAI PMH. And um, I don't have the exact results here in this particular presentation, but this is what we observed. And um, so, and this is one of the reasons why we kind of propose this on-demand resource batching mechanism, which is compatible with, uh, with, um, with resourcing, but it is not part of the specification yet. What you would also see is that basically, if we were to produce resource dumps for um, for um, uh, uh, for everything in those repositories, so the materialized kind of resource dumps which you create before the system which wants to collect uh, the results comes, then those would have a, uh, an incredibly faster performance uh, than uh, than even the resource batch. So um, what I want to, sh the, the message of this slide is really that even in a very extreme scenario for, um, for uh, resourcing, resourcing can be um, about, or not about, more than 10 times faster uh, than OAI PMH in delivering the records. And this is perhaps, uh, this is the last initial result which I want to share with you. So uh, this is uh, something which is really interesting. Uh, this is uh, this is kind of showing you how how bet how much better resourcing is in actually aggregating open access content, the full text files. So um, again, this uh, you you have uh, in the second column you have basically the number of repositories which form the sample on which we tested this, and then we tell you basically how many requests we have to make in order to get on average we need to make in order to get at least one or not, not at least, sorry, just one PDF file, basically, the, the file which contains the full text we're interested in. So in this space, we have to make 1,500 requests to the repository system in order to download one file. That is really, really horrible. It's not efficient. And, uh, you know, repository managers should be really happy uh, if, uh, if, this, uh, if this number uh, could go down because obviously the, it creates an, an unnecessary load on the repository system, and it's not really good for the aggregator because it takes the aggregator much longer. In comparison with resourcing, because you have this explicit link between metadata records and uh, the, the full text, you need exactly one request. And again, this one request is still an extreme scenario because if you use something uh, which I just described, uh, the resourcing batching mechanism, or if you use the resource dump, then you could basically have even fewer request, requests per, um, uh, per content item. Um, and that is, I think, one of the really critical benefits which resourcing provides and one of the key reasons why it should get adopted 
in a cross threat discipline. So um, this is my concluding slide. My conclusion is that basically if you're a data provider, then you should adopt resourcing. And, uh, but um, if you're still not convinced, then uh, I want to mention that this is still an ongoing project. The experiments are to be completed in, in December and we want to produce a paper which will have not just these three, uh, not just these three uh, tables which I shared with you, but perhaps, uh, perhaps more of them and hopefully providing, will provide an even more convincing argument for you to, uh, to adopt it. Uh, so that's all for me.